Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Welcome back to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. Now my final guest this morning, Pat McDonough from Supermax, is a great supporter of Business Matters, but since he last joined us on the show, he has opened the first Supermax in Wexford, he's received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Irish Franchise Association, and he's been honoured at the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. Pat, you won the industry category at this year's EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, but what does this particular accolade mean to you? Good morning, Carl. Thanks very much for having me. Well, first of all, I was delighted to to win it because it means that you're kind of uh, selected among your peers to be uh, Entrepreneur of the Year in the industry category. And um, I suppose any award that you get from your peers is is a bit more significant than anything else because it's people in in business and in industry that uh, vote for you or whatever. Um, So, yeah, and the experience of, of EY was excellent in the sense that I met a lot of people whom I would not never have met uh, if I hadn't entered the award and learned a lot from them. And again, it's hugely, hugely beneficial, I would say, in the sense that, you know, you can call on them at any stage and uh, ask them about something, including Liam Griffin and etc. exchange thoughts with them and difficulties with them, etc., you know. Of course, one of the greatest benefits of it is the development of your network, as you say. But for such a seasoned entrepreneur as yourself, what did you learn from the process or indeed the other finalists? Well, I suppose you really watch, watch, watch you learn from it and, and you, you, as I say, you learn something new every day. But you, um, you learn really, I suppose, the advantage of... Uh, of, of working in partnerships and in, in, as, as a part of a team. Um, you learn from it that it's important to be able to pick up the phone and relate to somebody else who might have had a problem or, or whatever of, of a similar nature and that can advise you on it. And uh, you learn, as I say, uh, it's, it's, you, you, you gain in confidence because sometimes when you're plowing the, the, the single furrow on your own, you think you might be on your own, but there's a lot down the furrow there with you and, and coming across the same challenges and the same opportunities as, as, as you have. And of course, problem solving is a daily occurrence in business. How do you approach solving complex problems? Well, depending on what, what complex it is, you have to make your own decision depending on the, at the end of the day. But you do learn, listen to what other people say. And again, teamwork is where it, it, there's this huge, huge importance in it. And everyone's contribution is worthwhile. So when you assimilate all those and, and assess them, that says was when you make the decision. Look, you're not always going to get it right, but if you get it right 60, 70, 80 percent of the time, you're doing very well. And of course, there's lots of ups and downs in business. But in terms of resilience, how have you built your resilience up over the years? It's a confidence thing. You know, it's, if you're self-confident, if you can believe in yourself if you can believe in the people around you and you uh, use your own judgment and your own conscience to make a decision then you know that's that's uh, that's really it um as i say it doesn't it doesn't always work out but once it works out the vast greater percentage of times then that's fine now supermax opened its 118th outlet in larkins cross in wexford last june why wexford pat and why did you decide to open outside of the town well we've been so long trying to get into the town that it was difficult to get the get a site and i'm sure I, i've been down there at least 20 or 30 times sometimes the site mightn't suit sometimes uh you know the, it wasn't it wasn't easy it wasn't possible maybe to buy the site and uh, sometimes maybe planning permission wasn't wasn't kind of uh, either forthcoming or wasn't kind of uh, wasn't received fairly uh, received fairly well on the site. So you have a whole different set of challenges in in, in getting a good site. And as I say, in, in Larkins Cross, we hit I think the right target there, the right spot, and uh, I think it's working very well for both parties there. And why was Wexford such an important area for you to locate in? You know, we hadn't been, we haven't any site in Wexford. It was important, to kind of get a footing there. You know, we will uh, obviously open other sites along the, uh, uh, in Wexford, but as I say, it was important to get just to get a footing there and um, get started. And hugely important, as I say, Wexford is a great town, great, uh, great county, and um, we're looking forward to further uh, expansion there. 
And what is the plan in terms of the rollout of further stores across the county over the coming years? Well, again, it's all down to location, 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 and wherever you can get the right site and the right location, then that's and and then obviously succeed in getting planning permission. That's what you you have to to work on. But unquestionably, uh, we will be whether it's next year or the year after, we will we will be uh, opening another site down there. And how is the outlet performing in Larkins Cross, Pat? Oh, exceptionally well. It's under the uh, we we put in a, a franchisee there, uh, Paul O'Brien, who was uh, also um, the site in Carlo, two sites in Carlo actually, and um, uh, it's going very well. Went uh, beyond our wildest dreams uh, when we opened there uh, initially. Uh, it's levelled off now, but as I say, we're still delighted with the with the with the with the reception we've got and with the the, the businesses there. And Pat, when you go out to look at a new site to locate a supermax on, what criteria do you have to review and assess it against? You look and see the accessibility of it. It's mostly drive throughs and out-of-town sites we'd be looking at anymore. Um, uh, so you, you, you look at the accessibility of it, you look at the parking area, the size of the site, what roads it's on, etc., and what traffic kind of it can generate. And again, uh, it's it's Sometimes it's your good instinct, you know, uh, but you, you can do all the surveys you want, but you have to go and physically see it and get a feel for the place, get a feel for the, the, the site, etc. And, and, and what the, uh, in some cases, what the traffic flows are, what the pedestrian flows are, if there are pedestrians in that area. But it's all about, you know, uh, going probably from experience, and I suppose the message nearly 40, over 40 years now, so uh, I should know a bit about it. Now, you recently stated that we are faced with a little tightening of the belt coming forward. Why do you believe that this is the case? I think, uh, you know, with the number, there's never just one reason alone why people tighten their belts a bit. Um, so I suppose Brexit has been there for a while. It's a lack of confidence kind of in the, in the, with the public out there in the market. It's because of maybe increased rents, uh, which, which is uh, affecting everyone across the country. The farmers aren't doing as well as they were, uh, and uh, there's, there's, there's just generally when when uh, there's a lack lack of confidence in the in the market, then you have a situation where people kind of uh, become a bit conservative. And Pat, on that basis, what are you doing to prepare for this tightening? Well, look, it's not anything radical yet. I wouldn't uh, be overly. Uh, exercise about it as of yet but I think you have to kind of uh, just watch your obviously in, in, in our business your overheads your labour costs your, your your costs generally uh, are something you have to watch and um, you don't want to leave that in the last minute until and, and that obviously increased in last uh, uh, last year in the budget that has a serious effect on the service industry that together with increased wages and increased overheads uh that's uh, sending a bit of a, a red flag up for businesses there because it's only probably now that they really feel the, the pinch of that 4.5% extra. And I do believe as well that you're quite vexed over the charges which Irish Water is charging for connections. Well, I, you know, as I say, it's, it's, it's right across the board. So whether it's rate, whether it's Irish Water, whether it's sometimes in some cases, you know, uh, cost of connections for ESB or for electricity or whatever, um, all these kind of uh, and red tape attached to planning commissions, etc. All these have a kind of a, a serious effect on, on 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 setting up a business, and it's quite difficult uh, in today's circumstances for anyone starting off uh, to to be able to deal with all those issues. Um, and whether it's as I say the cost of collections for Irish water, uh, whether it is whatever it is rates increases right across the country at the moment, um, then. You know, it's 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 a uh, it's it's difficult, as I say, for you know, younger people starting off and trying to start up a business or whatever, because uh, the overheads are preventative. On the topic of commercial rates, the valuations office in Dublin is completing a revaluation of commercial rates right across the country as we speak. What are your thoughts on the process that they're engaged in? Well, you know, I, I mean, they've targeted probably. Some businesses more so than others, and some areas more so than others. And um, I know that we had a rate increase in Barrack of Emma Plaza from about 65,000 to 145,000. Now, that's approximately three grand a week or thereabouts. But if you add another 
three grand on top of that to in your insurance uh, if you add another r- roughly fifteen hundred for um, for water rates, then you have a situation where you're seven and a half thousand uh, of a cost before you ever open the door, and that's all very relative because depending on where your location is, that that can rate, relate to whatever lo- location or whatever business you're in. But uh, you know, it's 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 um, it's a it's a fair, it's a serious cost, and. When you see what are you getting back for it, very little, if anything. Now, of course, you are very vocal on the claims culture, which has become an epidemic here in Ireland. There has been lots of talk about this over the last number of years, but really, has anything changed? Well, I mean, it's it's this is it's 15 years I think ago since we we highlighted this before, and at the time, um, it was dealt with by the then minister um, Mary Harney and Michael McDougall. And they set up the PIEV, which was very successful for the first few years until um, the Law Society decided to uh, challenge it. And after 21 judicial reviews, 21, I mean, you normally have a judicial review once or twice and anything, maximum. But 21 judicial reviews, uh, they won their case for being allowed to represent their clients in Payeb or whatever, and uh, accordingly, it kind of uh, reduced or diminished or whatever uh, Payeb's capability of dealing with claims, which they had done successfully successfully for a number of years, and that uh, allowed the legal profession uh, or certain elements of the legal profession to engage again with the courts, etc., and so therefore. Paya was rendered pretty uh, much to be just uh, an evaluator or evaluation on claims. And whilst all claims had to go through Paya, the clients were often advised by their uh, legal uh, advisors that they would get more in the courts. And um, so therefore we're back into the position that uh, prevailed, you know, 15 years plus ago, 20 years ago, etc. So now we're back nearly in a worse position. Civil Liability Act of 2004 hadn't been uh, hasn't been fully implemented. In actual fact, um, back in the uh, in that act in 2014 or 2004, I beg your pardon, the the uh, claims were supposed to be reported within two months. Um, now that has been totally overlooked. Uh, also, a fraudulent claimant was supposed to be referred to the DPP for prosecution. Um, that was totally, pretty much totally ignored. There was a few cases, a very, very, very few, I think two or three up to quite recently, up to the last year or so. Um, it has been introduced, I think, a bit more, but not very much in the last year. But anyway, so there was absolutely no penalty. Um, and it, I saw somewhere recently where, where uh, somebody said... Um, they just were told to go out and spin the wheel again. So um, <laughs> it, 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 it's uh, it's but as I said, I interviewed two people over the last two months who uh, both ran their own business and who, because of insurance, decided it was no longer viable and just walked away and decided to go back into the into the workforce again. So it is um, a serious issue. It, ha- it needs to be addressed. I don't think there's it's happening fast enough. So certainly there's uh, judicial counsel and all this type of stuff being talked about. But if the law was implemented as it is, it would stop a lot of it. Pat, there's a lot you would like to change in this country, especially around the whole area of bureaucracy. With the general election being called for May 2020, would you have any temptation to put your name on the ballot paper? Not in the slightest. Uh, not at all. I wouldn't have the patience to um, to get involved because... And first of all, I'm too busy. I have too much to do with the minister. But secondly, I just haven't uh, haven't the grow for it. And if you you know you have to like it, love, and be passionate about what you do. And if you don't, then move on, go on to something else or whatever. So I wouldn't have any uh, interest in it. And Pat, finally, the last time you and I met was at the Irish Franchise Awards in Clontarf Castle when you picked up the Lifetime Achievement Award. On the basis of that, what advice have you got for the next generation of entrepreneurs? Oh, look, at every generation has its own opportunities and uh, its own challenges. Um, 
um, how you know the, the, this at, at, I suppose at this stage uh, there was a lot of changes happening in 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 in, in the market out there. Um, so I, I I suppose I would say is find out what you like, what you love, what you can devote your time to, and um, be prepared to you know come 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 to an odd cul-de-sac along the way and be prepared to change your direction every so often and uh, uh but if you're passionate enough about what you do if you're uh, willing to make the self sacrifice if you're um determined enough uh to, to 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 go on when everyone else is maybe advising you not to and if you're you're if you're uh, if you've a, a mindset that you'll never give up um and if you have common sense, is probably another big big aspect to it. Uh, then you won't go too far wrong, um, and uh, use use whatever um, friends and connections you have to uh, help you through the, the, the sometimes the difficult times and the good times as well. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Pat McDonough from Supermax, and I would like to thank Pat for sharing his passionate views with us this morning. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.